Right, spur of the moment decision this morning. I thought I'm going out. <laughs> the thing being, I got it in my head that I wanted to find these orchids and failed. I don't like to fail. <laughs> so hopefully I've done my homework and we do have the age-old problem of trying to find a hole in the hedge. I'll worry about that in a minute because I've got to put me heavy shoes on. Looks like we're in. And that is not a well-used path. <laughs> That's the sort of area we're heading into. Let's get in and have a look. At least the gate's open, I haven't got to climb over it. <laughs> okay, when they said the area is wet, now I know what they mean. Wet. <laughs> Although this is not, this is it. This is, that is the extent of the area. Bearing in mind what I'm looking for, it could still be a needle in a haystack. We will give it a go, but I think there's going to be um, places where you can disappear into water, so I will have to tread carefully. And I've got no indication whereabouts in here what I'm looking for actually is, so I'm just going to have to walk around very slowly, very carefully. And in theory, if there's a path, it means somebody's been here before, and they may have known where they were going, so we'll follow the little bit of path. Let's see where we get to. We've got brambles and uh, nettles and I'm just, at the moment, I'm just trying to work out how wet underfoot this is going to be. Um, so I don't want to disappear. We might have to go back and get the other boots. Anyway, let's have a go. I mean, somebody's walked here before. The question is why? Why did they come down this bit? Oh, we've got some butterflies anyway. Hey, why did they come down here? <laughs> ah, water mint. You can smell water mint. I've got a feeling there's some, uh, we're about to get to some water. <laughs> I'm not sure about going this way, quite honestly. Let's try the other way. This just has all the hallmarks of um, having some very wet feet coming up and this way looks a bit drier <laughs> he says sploop <laughs> oh first orchid not what I'm looking for but we have an orchid so there are there's something here anyway well that's uh, those are not the droids we're looking for this is classed as a fen we're in fenland which doesn't exist in this part of the country under normal circumstances. Right, we've got a choice. That way or this way? We'll try this way. Oh, there's another nice orchid over there. And another one there, lovely deep purple one. These will be marsh orchids, um, which quite honestly in my part of the world are common as muck. <laughs> uh, relatively. Um, as orchids go but um, so far I'm dry underfoot um, I must admit this doesn't seem the sort of landscape but it is looking at some of the pictures I've seen some people are very nice when they find orchids and they back up a bit and take a picture showing you know the orchid like very small in the picture but the the background um, which is good because then you get a feel for the sort of place you need to be. Um, the marsh orchids are everywhere. Um, don't all this purple is not marsh orchids, only a little bit of it is. Guys, <laughs> <coughs> look at the grasshoppers, they're everywhere. And that's something I don't see very often anymore. So I'm scanning now. Um, well, honestly, what I need to do is turn the camera off for a bit and use my eyes because I'm, I'm looking at what I'm filming instead of um, what I'm supposed to be looking for. So we'll shut off for a bit now. Well, that's one of the rarer flowers that are found here. That's the only one I've seen so far. That's Ragged Robin. Well, that's its nickname. Don't ask what its proper name is. Beautiful little flower. And that's the only one I've seen so far. But what I am seeing a lot of is these gorgeous coloured thistles. 
And there's loads of those and there's lots of different types of thistles as well looking round. Um, as I say there's an assortment of flowers here, some nice yellow ones. I've seen those before. Again, don't ask what they're called. I know very, very little about our wildflowers. Um, but this place is full of them. There's splashes of good colour everywhere. And the marsh orchids are everywhere as well. But we still haven't found what we're looking for. We shall carry on. I'm only a quarter of the way round the edge at the moment, and I haven't gone across the middle. I might have to zigzag. But i tell you what I have just seen, I think. No, I'll wait until I get closer. At last, something other than a marsh orchid. I may well have to look that up. That's not a marsh orchid. Totally different shaped flower. It could be a fragrant orchid. Uh, it could be a poor quality pyramid orchid. <laughs> but um, it's something different. Anyway, that's a different species at long last. As I said, all I've seen so far is marsh orchids, I believe. Unless there's any masquerading that warrant closer inspection and I haven't done it. But anyway, at least we found one different one. It's still not the droids I'm looking for. Slight detour. That's a comma butterfly. Um, lovely bright orange and brown may catch a glimpse of it, but on the underside is a silver comma, which is where it gets its name from. You should be able to see it now. Um, I could try zooming in, but uh, we'll leave it in peace, doing its thing, feeding on the bramble. Um, that may have been what I caught out of the corner of my eye just now, thinking it was something um, rather more spectacular. But that's still a nice detail. There's quite a few, I've seen four different types of butterflies so far. But because it's reasonably warm, they're on the move. <laughs> and um, therefore difficult to spot when they're landing. Anyway, we've got one. See what I mean about being careful where you walk. Um, under my feet. As far as I know, these are all marsh orchids. Um, but that one isn't. Go and have a look and see what that one is. You've got to be so careful where you put your flipping feet. That looks like what we've just seen. Possibly. It's not, is it? That looks like something different again. That last one we looked at, that I stopped at, that was special, didn't have that star shape on top of it, and the lip was a totally different shape. So that could be yet a different species again. I'm going to have to do some homework when I get home, aren't I? These are ever so difficult to identify. <laughs> the trouble is they hybridise all the time. Um, they're even making it difficult for the experts nowadays. Anyway, we will carry on searching. I'll just give you a sight, a general pan round of the area. Um, it's just a mass of wildflowers, quite honestly. Um, some I know in as much as I've seen many times before. Some are new to me. Um, but the habitat just varies almost every step. I mean, I'm, I'm on a nice short bit of grass now that's raised up, so my feet aren't getting wet. But um, this is the extent. There's a little bit over the other side of those trees, which I've just been to. Um, that goes into a block of flats, the other side of that hedge. The other side of that hedge is the road. And the other side of that hedge is, well, this side of the hedge is a river or stream, and the other side of the hedge is um, an industrial estate. So this is it. So it doesn't look like too much to look over, does it? <laughs> but, you know, given that there might only be one little clump of these plants in here, so it's a registered site, but um, there might not be lots and lots. Anyway, I shall keep looking. I'll stop when I find some... There's butterflies everywhere. <laughs> um, for those who know the English butterflies, there's meadow browns. I've seen one ringlet, um, large white, large skipper, and the comma that we saw earlier. I thought I saw a dark green fritillary, but I think it was the comma. 
similar colours when in flight at speed. But we'll carry on looking. As I said, I, I haven't even touched the middle bit here yet. All I've done is gone round the edge. So we've still got quite a bit of ground to cover. Well, we're not going to do it standing here, are we? That's another flower I've never seen before. Really tall stems with the tiniest of bloom on the top. But gorgeous red. I, I don't know whether they open any more than that or... It doesn't look like they do. And um, from here, I can see a f quite a few of them sticking up, now that I've looked. Um, and some of them are really tall. But I haven't got a clue what that is. Well, that's very attractive, whatever it is. Lovely deep red colour, but tiny, absolutely tiny. That's another new one on me. I reckon every couple of steps I see something different. And um, I need to carry on taking the steps. We've just done a very boggy bit, probably about... Um, two inches of water under the sphagnum so that was the soggy bottom down there <laughs> hopefully we're uh, yeah we're heading for I think I might have another boggy bit just there and then the ground gets higher over there but I'm doing the edge at the moment I'm trying to stick as close to the edge as I can so that I've written off everything around the outside and then we can head towards the middle so that's a ringlet butterfly there they look black but they're not, they're, they're just the deepest of browns and that's far too far away. And they're almost impossible to film because they just never stop. And when they stop, they stop for about three seconds and then they're off again. You know, <laughs> it's just really difficult to film. But um, you get the false impression because the top side is almost black with the finest white line round the outside. But when they close their wings, they're a brownie colour and they've got golden rings. Little golden rings on the underside, hence the name, ringlet. Um, anyway, uh, we shall carry on walking. There's some more of these little red flowers. I don't think they do open any more than that. Uh, some more tall thistles. Now, the ringlets are everywhere and these have newly emerged. They're absolutely pristine. I can get one to stay still for a minute or two. Uh, we may be lucky sometimes, you know. If you get a cool spell, you know, like if it's, it's only just warm enough for them to fly and then a big cloud comes over and the temperature drops two or three degrees, they'll land and they'll stay there. So providing you spotted where they actually went down, you can go and film them then. But they'll always have their wings closed under those circumstances. So, uh, I mean, I've just seen one land, and whether I can get anywhere near it or not, remains to be seen. Is it in the middle of that clump of yellow flowers, and it's not. Oh my goodness. That, with a chunk taken out of it, is a purple hair streak, I think. And if it is, that's the first one I've ever seen. Well, first one I ever saw. I'll have to have a good look at that when I get home to identify that. So, uh, but it wasn't what I thought. So even with the butterflies we don't get the droids we're after. There's a ringlet. See how close that one will let me get. You can see the rings. Hopefully. <laughs> Can't see what I'm filming at all. I doubt if I can get any no, I was gonna say I doubt if I can get any closer than that. As soon as I move, it'll be off. It's landed again. No, it's not gonna stay. It's not gonna stick around. But this um, stack of bramble here is in full flood. Um, and a lot of the butterflies feed on bramble, so this could be like a, a centre for them, where they stock up on the old nectar so that they can whiz around and I can't catch them. <laughs> Anyway, onwards. I don't think I've ever been anywhere where standing in one place I can see so many orchids. They're just in clusters now. We're starting to find clusters of them, which means I really have got to be careful where I walk. Um, they're just everywhere. I've never seen this many in such close proximity 
So even though I haven't found the ones I'm looking for, this is a smashing site to come to, just to visit to see orchids. If you had the right equipment, you could get some lovely close-ups, which I haven't. <laughs> you know what I'm like at close-ups with this camera, anyway. I have got my DSLR, but um, even that's handheld. It's not liable to get close enough to get real detailed close-ups. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think I've ever been to a place where literally every step I could tread on an orchid if I wasn't being very careful, which obviously I am careful as I can be. Uh, right, well we're, we're doing our um, crisscrossing now. What I'm doing is a square, or an oblong, um, coming in about 10-15 feet from the previous path and I'll go in ever decreasing circles or squares until we hit the centre. So that I, I can virtually guarantee I haven't missed anywhere. That's, that's my theory. But as I said, you know, this, this site here is not the main site. It's the, the one that you need a permit for, the other side of the road. And there could be a little bit of a trick in the wording. And they only implied that what I'm looking for is on this site, when in fact it's not, just to get you to come and visit. <laughs> Although I would imagine a site like this, they, they don't want hundreds of people tramping all over this. It would ruin it. I mean, I'm having to be incredibly careful where I walk, and I'm still treading on plants. You know, I'm not treading on the orchids, because they're the ones I know. But I'm still treading on plants. So I've still got to go careful. Especially when heading into the deeper stuff. And that looks like a soggy bit going down through there. So I'll put the camera away for a bit. But I'm determined not to miss a bit, if you see what I mean. So, <laughs> if that's where I have to walk, so be it. But, uh, you can usually tell the soggier bits because of the sphagnum. It'll be a bit squishy underfoot. Oh no, it's not too bad. I would imagine that it would normally be very wet. Um, but as I said, we haven't had the rain, so. Right, let's cut in again. See what comes next. That's another beauty, nice and tall and um, I'm going to pan round. I'm being naughty. Um, the site that I just left, we did not find the droids. So I've crossed the road to where the gate is, to this place where you're supposed to have a permit. There's no sign and the gate's wide open. So there's, there's just nothing to say you can't come in here. Now if somebody wants to shout at me and say get out, then that's fine and I'll promptly leave. But until then, I'm going to have a good look round. It's a very similar area. I can't see much difference, quite honestly, apart from the fact I did get my feet wet getting across that rushy area up there to get into this bit. But there's still no sign of anything yet, but I've only just started looking. I can see places where others have walked, but <laughs> if they searched in vain, following their path isn't going to do me any good, is it? But this is another place where there's just so many orchids everywhere you look. Um, majority of marsh orchids. It's a, it's a bog at the end of the day, endearingly known as a fen. Um, it's, the fens are rare in this country simply because although they're a boggy area, they're not acidic. They're slightly alkaline which is unusual. That's, that's why you get the diversity of plants here that you don't get in normal boggy areas because they tend to be acidic, stagnant water and all that. Anyway, I shall carry on looking and uh, see if the elusive droids can be found. As I said, there, there could be one small clump of these orchids tucked away in a corner somewhere in the long grass and that's it, that's all there is and it's just luck that you come across them. But because they ha have been found here, it's a registered site. It doesn't mean to say you walk in the gate and they're everywhere. <laughs> it's not quite like that. Um, anyway, I shall carry on looking. Sometimes it's just having an eye for something that's not quite the same as everything else. Now, as I said, most of these are marsh orchids. They're coming to the end of their season. So to find one in perfect condition with all the blooms open will be unusual. So when you see one sticking up like that, that's a lot narrower and hasn't even opened all of its blooms yet, you know it's something different. And again, I don't know what that is. I'm gonna to have to look it up. The blooms are the tiniest orchid blooms I've seen yet today. 
and it's a very narrow column. Now what I ought to do, if I'm going to try and identify this, is find the leaves. And the leaves are not spotted, so they're pl it's plain leaved. There's a couple of bracts part way up the stem, that's often important for identification. And it's very narrow. And this is at the start of its season. And I've just seen another one. Again, if it's at the start of its season, you wouldn't expect it to be open, would you? <laughs> Fall over, why don't you? So there's another one of the same sort. Whatever they are. <laughs> As I say, I will try and identify them when I get home. Um, I get them on a big screen and blow them up or something. But um, they are very attractive. I don't even know if that's in focus, because I can't see my screen now. But it's good light here, so possibly it's in focus. And we'll see if we can find out what that one is. Um, so that's something different yet again. As I said, I haven't got a clue what all these are, but um, I'll carry on looking. Right, over there is a marbled white. Um, black and white checkered butterfly, very attractive. It's in the distance, but you might be able to see it. it's landed now, so it's down in the grass. And I was just about to walk over to try and catch that on film, and we had a wood for the trees moment. And all around me are the droids. All around me. They are so inconspicuous. And basically, the amount of trampling that's been going on here, probably people trying to get pictures, um, <laughs> but they're everywhere. You might not even be able to see them yet until I, until I get down and actually point them out, but they are everywhere. They're all around me, down by my feet. They're everywhere. And somebody has very carefully even cut the vegetation around that one, so maybe that one's a bit special. But we've now found them. What I now want to do is find a good example a nice big tall one that comes out the top of the grass <laughs> and I might have to put my bag down and put the camera I know this camera can focus down to about two inches but it has to be stationary and back in the grow room it has to be on the tripod well if I rest it on my camera bag and it's dead still that might be as good as so I'm going to see if I can find a really good specimen now um, yeah, I, was, I was chasing the butterfly and I walked straight into them. And luckily I didn't flip and tread on any. I'd, I'd be really upset if I'd actually trodden on any. Um, these are rare. Anyway, anyway that's the butterfly. <laughs> They're not rare. Any downland you'll find them. So, uh, oh, he's landed as well. I'm not going to trample through that undergrowth and try and take a film with it. I'm, I'm going to try and stick to the paths now. Now I know that I'm in the middle of the flipping things. See what I mean? You find something that you've got a hell of a job to find, and then when you find them, there's, there's probably hundreds here. Um, anyway, I'm going to stop filming and see if I can find a good one. One that's sticking up a bit. So to show you what I mean about localised... At the point I'm standing, these orchids are common. Take two steps in any direction and they're gone. So starting from this side, there's none. Until you get to that one and that one and the one next to it. So that's the start. And then, then there's a few. So I'm standing in a very clear patch. There's one nearly under my feet here. Coming in from this side, that's the first one. There aren't any over there. There's none. And then you come to here. And then you look. There's a group there. And one nearly trodden on. And then about where that tall white flower is, they stop. And there's no more. And then there's another cluster over there, sticking up through the grass. And then that's as far as they go. This is it. Probably within 10 feet of where I'm standing is where they are. And there aren't any more. But where they are, here, there's loads. So now I'm going to try and set the camera up and see if we can get a close-up, because these really are worth a close-up. They don't look much from above. You've got to get up and look at them closely. So I'll see if I can do that. The trouble is it's windy, so although I've got the camera still, the plant won't keep still. I don't know how in focus this is going to be, but um, this is what I've been looking for. And this is a marsh helleborine. And the helleborines are orchids, they've just got that separate name on the end. There's quite a few of them, 
um, sword leaf helleborine, white, um, narrow leaved, broad leaved, green flowered. There's there's quite a few violet, red. There's quite a few, and they're all quite rare, all of them. And some of them are only known on like two sites in the country. So I do hope I've got that in focus, and I do hope you can sort of appreciate the delicacy of what we're looking at and the colours. Colours are so delicate. It's a dusky pink. So uh, now there's different varieties of these with different colours. Some of them are almost pure white and some of them are quite dark in colour. So I'm going to have a look round and see if I can find any different ones. Again I'm going to have to hand hold this because to put my bag down would squash several other plants. But this looks like a particularly nice version. I hope that's in focus. I can't see. Um, the screen is hopeless in bright light. But um, very Cymbidium like, in my opinion. Which, for a native orchid in this country, <laughs> is quite unusual. And given the normal size of our blooms, these are quite large, relatively speaking and have their own separate stem. Um, well, it's an awful long way to come and um, I'm a little underwhelmed, I suppose, but nonetheless, I can tick that one off my list of never seen. Um, I've not only now seen it, I've seen hundreds of them. Well, a lot of them. I won't say hundreds, on reflection, possibly 30 or 40. Um, and I found another area as well where there was another, like, half a dozen or so but it's just in this corner of the fen where all the grass has been trodden down I could have come straight here couldn't I <laughs> from back there you can't see all this trodden down grass but anyway that's the droid I've been looking for um, and I'm well pleased to have finally found it even though I'm in a place I shouldn't really be in but if they're gonna leave the gate open and not have any signs then just people on holiday like to walk in places like this Mind you, you get your feet wet here. I have actually got my feet wet. But um, anyway, uh, oh, my legs are stiff. That's from the previous walk. If you look over there, there's cars and people. That's actually a garden centre. Where there's a garden centre, there might be some cake, <laughs> a cup of coffee, <laughs> and probably more importantly, a toilet. Although there's um. When you're out in the countryside, for a man at least, there's toilets all around you. But um, there are also quite a lot of people around me, even though I'm in a very sort of secretive, quiet place. And there's nobody else here. And where I'm standing, I can't be seen really, apart from that one little gap in the hedge through to the car park with the big fence. So anyway, we found the droids. Hopefully I've got some in-focus shots. I'm now going to get the DSLR out and see if I can take some actual photos um, and, see if, see, and we'll see if those are e any clearer when we get home. And just to emphasise the needle in the haystack, I made my way round there until I saw what looked like the makings of a path, started to see orchids, well pleased, and I came down here and I found my way over to there, which is where they are. And I stepped over one, getting there. See what I mean about a needle in a haystack? There's just one here, all on its own. And it was right next to a different type of orchid. Completely missed it. So there could well be others dotted around, but you can see what I mean about them being very, very inconspicuous. Once they're down in the grass, you can just walk past them. Another light, nice load of the um, water forget-me-nots. And I'm not going to justify what I've just done. I'm just going to leave it at that. There's the road. There's my car. This is the entrance. This is the gate. And as far as I'm concerned, that's an open invitation, despite what the website says. If you're supposed to have a permit to come in here, then um, 
<laughs> you should have a notice, permit holders only or something at least. So uh, it doesn't justify what I've just done, but I was ex exceptionally careful and I can see where I've been today. It's certainly in one place. There was a particularly nice version of the um, Marsh Helleborine and three had been like trodden on and flattened to be able to get a picture of that one. And that wasn't me, I can assure you. I was incredibly careful. Talk about going round like bloody tw Tinkerbell, I think. would <laughs> be a good expression. Practically on tiptoes, frightened of treading on anything I shouldn't do. And hopefully I didn't. I was incredibly careful. And once I got into the area where they were, I mean, this is, the, this is what you come up against when you walk in the gate. It doesn't exactly look inviting, does it? <laughs> and there's also two, like, sunken areas with running water in that you have to get across that you can't even see. They're in underneath this lot. <laughs> so it's not inviting. But, um, you know, once you get through this deep stuff up in that far corner, that's where it sort of levels out. So uh, anyway, that's, that's my trip for today. Mission accomplished. And um, quite honestly, as far as flowers were concerned and enjoyment was concerned, noisy tyke. Um, the first site I went to was far more enjoyable from a general walk around with butterflies, all sorts of flowers, some orchids, much more enjoyable than this place. But then the first site didn't have the marsh hellebarines and this site did. Um, anyway, we will analyse what I've got when I get home. Um, I'm going to call in that garden centre now and see, see what sort of refreshments I can get without risking my life and catching the flipping virus. I will analyse before I even think about walking in. <laughs> if I can't get to some food safely, then I'll wait till I get home. I'm about an hour and a quarter from home, so it's, it's not too bad. It's motorway virtually all the way. So, uh, okay, this could be the end of the video. I might add a bit on when I get home, but um, if it is the end, then hope you've enjoyed it and see you next time.